All right, and we are back. So we'll go to the restaurants in just a moment. But uh, Francis, there's a story you have been following for a good part of this week about the 1.3 billion shillings mm -hmm. caused quite a debate 42 million for hiring ambulances 4 million for t 70 million communication and kenyans get very interested when they start seeing those kinds of things uh, maybe just give us a lowdown where did this thing come from what context and that sort of thing well very interesting the the document is here um a Printed it with the help of. Uh, you can you can you table it. You can table it. I can table it. <laughs> you the have same the way tea. It's tabled in the house. <laughs> Serve the tea. And of course, the, the document is uh, was 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 tabled before the National Assembly Health Committee. That committee is chaired by Sabina Chege, the woman rep for Moranga County. And the document is titled "Brief to the National Assembly on Response to Questions Raised Regarding Updates on COVID-19." Quite a number of questions were asked, but the main question was, number one, funds streamed to the Ministry of Health for the fight against COVID-19 pandemic and its utilization to date. And the answers were very specific. Actually, I looked at the document and they're talking about 2.3 billion shillings or thereabout. One billion is the amount of money that was um, allocated by the national government for hiring of uh, health workers. You remember that uh, discussion? And there's a breakdown on the exact amount of money that is supposed to go to various institutions. For example, KU Referral Hospital is supposed to get 245 million shillings out of the 1 billion to hire 568 members of staff. Bagadi COVID Center, which is under Kenyatta National Hospital, was allocated 125 million shillings to hire 288 members of staff. Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital, 42 million shillings to hire 94 members of staff. And the counties were allocated 498 million shillings to hire 1,059 uh, members of staff. And for 24 million shillings was to remain at the Ministry of Health to hire about 60 uh, new members of staff. That's about 936 million shillings. Then there was another 300 million shillings that came from the national government. Uh, that 300 million shillings was uh, allocated to various uh, government agencies. And what has caught the national attention is the one billion shillings that came from the World Bank um, that so far the documents indicate. And this is not, these are not our documents. These are documents that are uh, given by the Ministry of Health uh, to the National Assembly Health Committee. And there's some specific expenditures there. And the columns are specific. Number one, description. Number two, initially approved proposal. Number three, the, procure, the procuring entity. And number four, the funds used. For example, leasing of 15 ambulances, 42 million shillings that has been spent. Um, accommodation for 30 health workers needing quarantine services for 90 days, 12 million shillings that has been spent. Uh, airtime for 500 members of staff, about 2 million shillings has been spent. Fuel and maintenance of motor vehicles, 30 of them at a cost of 40,000 40, shillings per week, 14.4 million shillings. It is indicated clearly funds used. And then tea and snacks for various teams, funds used. 4 million shillings, initially proposed 10 million shillings. Up on the guys got, mm, they picked att that up. Uh, their attention was drawn to China that. China Mandas. China Mandas. But th there was also the stationary um, vote, printing of uh, printing papers and toners, initially allocate, uh, allocated 2.5 million shillings, but 6.5 million shillings has been spent. Communications, 70 million shillings. And then there's printing of travelers' forms, quarantine forms, and discharge forms. 9 million shillings has been spent. So these are not our documents. These are documents that came from the Ministry of Health. And so Kenyans have to interact with these figures because they came from the ministry. And no, probably no one is saying that money has been stolen. All people are asking for is an explanation on how this money was spent. And once the explanation has come, it will be fine. And there's nothing wrong with Kenyans saying, hey, hey, wait a minute. I think we have a question on a certain expenditure. There's nothing wrong with that. And so no one should catch feelings when questions are asked. Let answers be given. Let Kenyans ask questions because two things. Number one, the money that they are asking questions about is their money drawn from their taxes, the 300 million shillings. If it is about the money that came from the World Bank, that money was given on behalf 
of the people of Kenya. So whoever is given that money to manage must answer questions from Kenyans because it is their money, their money. So they should get answers. And once the questions have been answered, no big deal. I, I if there is money that has been lost, let's find the offending um, uh, entity. If no money has been, has been lost, fine, let's proceed. In any case, there's more money that is coming. By the way, there's mm -hmm. more money that is Some coming. Some 2 billion shillings. Uh, 2.3 billion shillings from... It's supposed, billion. supposed to be 6 billion. Yes, 1 billion has come. 2.3 billion is expected in a few weeks. And then there will be another 2.6 billion. So if there are questions people are asking about the 1.3 billion shillings, it is fine because ultimately there will be 40 billion plus. So watch out to Uliza Maswali. Because Ata Maswali, but, 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 Joe, Joe, sorry, yeah. I just uh, when Gashuri was speaking, we were seeing a Facebook post by Minister Mutai Kagu on this issue. And you talk about, there it is. And uh -huh. he's saying that Kuna Mambo Enendelea Hapo, that he's causing all the hula baloo and he's trying kujitetea, saying under his watch, Pesa Zitapotea. Because remember in Kenya, we are asking questions because we've been beaten a lot of times in terms of public money. Right. To maybe wa Pesa Maranyingi, corruption cases are so many in the past year or so we million billions in fact we kept talking about how these days it's not even millions anymore that we are losing its billions so we just want accountability as kenyans to do easy hell as to make a vp if you spend four million shillings on tea and snacks and mandazi then come out and tell us we spent it on that but we need that openness that accountability because we are suspicious in terms of how our money is being spent pesas it may be sana na sana na sana and i think it's right for people to question this and someone needs to come out even if it's the minister himself to come and explain to us so that to well, to well, shake today, it, today, can today, today dr rashid said that uh, the ps who's accounting uh, mm. officer uh, susan Mushashe, will give some explanations in the coming days but but it seems to me linus that the problem here is transparency that we are dealing with huge sums of money and in the context of a very suspicious population that is used to being defrauded of all kinds of monies that are allocated to in, even deserving disasters and all of these things. So shouldn't it perhaps have been uh, prudent for the ministry to be more upfront with information regarding money, M more like they seem to be upfront with the numbers that they give us every day, where they, they will come out before even questions are raised. Because there's usually something disarming about someone saying, you know what, we've got this amount, this is how we've used it, before anyone raises any mm -hmm. queries in parliament. I think the ministry should, be, should make no mistake about this. It should be aware that this will be the most watched expenditure mm. ever in recent times. Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, Francis said last week, Waki Esabu, Tuna Esabu. Waki Jumlisha. Waki Jumlisha, Tuna Jumlisha. The ministry should make should be no doubt about that. There'll be so many accountants. There'll be so many mathematicians. Yeah. There'll be so many calculators handling this account down to the last mask, you know, the ones that, you know, the, the medics use and throw mm -hmm. away. We want to know to the last coin. Because as you correctly put it, we are dealing with a population that has been beaten not once, not twice, so many, many times. Because we know people profit from disasters, whether it's floods, hunger, uh, famine, they just missed the opportunity with the locust, but it's too early to say that. And even... Just disrupted by it, 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 it was dis disrupted. You would have found some private entrepreneurs capable of scaring the locust <laughs> at several billion, uh, million, <laughs> million shillings. Because that is our culture that needs to end. And I think with the long post that um, the cabinet secretary has, has put there, he needs to be aware that this account has many, many, many watchers. He needs to, almost on a daily basis, the same way he's releasing mm. figures of the infected, yeah. let's have the figures of, in, in terms of the money spent towards uh, this operation. There are things that obviously raise questions. For example, the contribution of the media industry, the broadcasters, is to the tune of 150 million, million yeah. of free airtime, whatever you see there, in terms of COVID communications, is free. But that's, also, that. but that's also not taking into account all the free ads that have been running 
prior to that pledge for 150 million mm -hmm. going forward. Absolutely. Yeah. And All you know the, the ads that people see that they're running for free. Must add. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because yes. there's, uh, then in uh, the numbers Francis has shared with us, 70 million shillings on communication. towards communication. Unless they're saying that the 70 million shillings was used in producing all those things we are talking we are to, we are seeing on air which would be quite interesting i mean those would have to be very serious productions well, we do production we could have done it we do production yeah. we could have done Quite it at no to, cost. to say about those productions i mean <laughs> because you can see a 70 million shilling production, production when yeah. you you know yeah so yeah. so for a start i think there should be a full disclosure of what the 70 million in communication mm. is about because in terms of media the amount of support government has received in terms of communication of on, on covid affairs has been amazing because the media basically turned up this is a national emergency mm -hmm. it's all this we is are covering a war. All, it is all we are yeah. covering by the way it's I mean, all we are covering the it, floods will come and intrude quote unquote a little bit then you just go right back mm -hmm. to COVID. Absol absolutely so, so uh, what the ministry ought to be aware of is these numbers are being watched coin by coin. Yeah. Yv Yvonne, you, you spoke about accountability a couple of weeks ago. Um, <laughs> yes, I speak about accountability a lot. So here's the other one that is interesting, that four million for, for tea and snacks. Now there's nothing wrong with it except for the fact that when you get donor funding, I'm not sure that you want any of that money to go towards tea and snack. Um, it would be interesting to say we've spent four million on gloves and PPE and whatnot and you know face masks and that sort of thing. And this is because, surely, does the Ministry of Health not have its own budget for tea and snacks? Don't they haven't, usually? Haven't they surely? been taking tea? Haven't they been taking tea before the 13th of March when they announced our first case? So it's just, you know, some of these things that seem... Um, a little bit off and like you said people are going to question it and there's just um other things that uh, that are interesting Sorry, in, in the if statement they are spending 70 yes. million on yeah. communications yeah. then they had better communicate clearly <laughs> including <laughs> on, <laughs> oh. on the communication around <laughs> tea and snacks yeah. because it can be something as reasonable as how are the policemen on those roadblocks surviving mm -hmm. okay who is yeah. feeding them these are legitimate Fine. Uh, questions of operations so you don't just because when you do tea and snacks yeah it gives this impression of a laid-back setup i know where, where somebody is taking a lot of tea preferably tea and from crumpets at four yeah. in the afternoon yeah. you, you would describe this uh, <laughs> uh, uh, better even when it comes to the issue of, of tea but let me go back to the point on uh, on communications yeah because it must come out very very clearly not just for Royal Media Services, but on behalf of oh, broadcasters. Yeah. I don't know of any broadcaster that is being paid for running ads. We are all running those ads, advertisements, for free. For free. Hmm. Yeah. Public communication coming from government running for free on television. And during prime time. And radio. during prime time. And, and they during prime time and across yeah. the hours. So, 70 million, please state that. Clearly. Yeah, and the communication perhaps needs to be very clear. So communication and, means and this, what? And this, there was 75 exactly. million for KDF. Yeah, yeah, Did they buy tanks or anything like that to deal with? Like it would be interesting to, to find out what is this? I, I know that spending around military is usually shrouded in, in this secrecy. Uh, mysterious cloak. We never quite know. But to see something like 75 million uh, around KDF as if this was, you know, Al-Shabaab where we really have to go all out and I, I don't know, but that's something that I've also asked, uh, a lot of people are asking that question. It is also important to note that before COVID, there was a budget, the 2019-2020 mm -hmm. budget, government ministries, departments, agencies, commissions, all of them had their allocation of the 2019-2020 budget. And there has also there's also an, an opportunity to reallocate some of the money. For example, there's no longer foreign travel. Local travel is minimized. So there are opportunities to reallocate some of these expenditures and deal with specific issues. But make no mistake, people will ask questions, and they have legitimate reasons to ask questions. Look, we are talking about a scenario where the bulk of our population can no longer 
go to work. Some have lost their jobs. People have to endure with pay cuts. People's businesses are on a down low. So when you hear people ask questions about yeah. the expenditure, they have legitimate reasons to ask. In any case, look, 70 million shillings spent on communications, 15 million shillings cumulatively spent on printing. That's 85 million already. What are then the another 4 million shillings on tea and snacks. You're heading to 10% yeah. of the 1 billion shillings being spent on specific issues that are raising questions. No one is so far raising questions about the 277 million shillings that has been spent on PPEs, but probably there are reasons to ask a few questions and as to who procured and at what cost. Then the lab equipment at 330 million shillings, then another uh, 196 million shillings spent on test kits, and so on and so forth. People would want to know, I mean, from whom, at what cost? from whom and at what cost. So that people can also tell whether there is value for money or not. And these are legitimate reasons. And it, it will not fly to introduce uh, terminologies like guys are trying to sidetrack me, propaganda, and so on and so forth. If people have asked questions about expenditure Address and you them. have given them answers, yeah. then we should now move to the next level. But if people ask questions and you say ni propaganda, then there's a problem, in my opinion. No, it, it may well, it may well be, but uh, what might be more helpful is, is that th this is the information, yep. and that is why all those things you're hearing are propag uh, is propaganda, mm -hmm. because the accurate information is, is ABCD. I think that will be But, but Joe, helpful. just a, just a quick addition to what Joe, uh, to what uh, Francis was saying, and a reminder to the ministry that money, Ministry of Health, Money has been lost, not theoretically, but practically, within the Ministry of Health itself. itself. Yes. Five billion shillings at some point. And then there is the equipment scheme uh, scam the as leasing, well. Yeah. Leasing, yeah, equipment leasing. The equi equipment leasing scam. So we're not dealing with a ministry that is totally uh, clean. What about the containers? The, 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 exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not coming with clean hands. So they must place these suspicions correctly because they're not coming with a good record. This is the opportunity for them. And I think we said this when we were more positive about what is going on there. We, we said that this is the opportunity for the ministry under the new leadership. And there's a fantastic team there right now to acquit itself of a very, very bad image, an image of a thiefing ministry. Because things, man, money has been lost there. It has never been accounted for. So it is possible to lose a lot of money uh, through billions. COVID. I think, Gashuri, you spoke about how this COVID uh, pandemic has affected households mm -hmm. and people in terms of losing their jobs and, and livelihood and, and having to be laid off. And then we hear about this uh, 4 million shillings in tea and snacks and the 9 million in printing and all that. And, and then in fact, there's a story that comes to mind of a lady in Kisawuni who had to even boil stones uh, for her eight children so that she could make them believe that there's actually food uh, that is cooking when there wasn't anything. She was boiling stones. And you have people who in quarantine who are unable, who are given bills by the time of their 14 days there, that they are unable to pay. We even see some of them trying to jump the fence, others trying to commit suicide because they're unable to pay for uh, being in the quarantine facilities, 90,000, 70,000, 50,000 shillings for being there for 14 to 28 days. And then we see such instances of money being spent this way. Again, we need that accountability. That's why Kenyans are angry and bitter and, 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 and they feel uh, shortchanged and they feel uh, that they're being conned in, some, in, in, in one way because everyone is suffering. So that's why we need answers and we need answers yesterday. You see, there's something interesting here. For example, I'm looking at the two specific votes, stationary, printing papers and toners at 6.5 million, and then printing of travelers' forms, quarantine forms, discharge forms at 9 million shillings. These are not security documents that are being printed, I would assume. I mean, because if it is a discharge form or a quarantine form or travelers' form, those are not security forms. So would, is there a provision, for example, for mass photocopying because these documents are, are the same it's no not like you're printing list. one sure. one 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 so when questions are asked let, let the questions be answered let let us be told for example 
um, the ambulances, they were hired from who and at what cost? Because we've seen counties that have leased uh, ambulances. So let us compare. If County A leased ambulances at this much money and the Ministry of Health is leasing those ambulances at this much money, is it value for money? And make no mistake, as Lena said, people are at home, they're watching Kindly, the number of calculators out there, the number of mathematicians and accountants and auditors out there are very many. Uh, mostly because um, there's a lot of money here. And when people continue to ask questions, it is a good thing. In any case, I thought um, we are in a democratic nation. Accountability and transparency are basic principles in good governance. So actually the government should be happy that its citizenry is alert, is asking questions, is interested in knowing how their money is being spent. Mm -hmm. So there, there shouldn't be any ill feeling towards people who are asking questions. And once the questions have been asked, it's a good thing. In any case, the, the minister and the team has, has earned some measure of trust so far. It is good to keep in line with that trust, such that when people ask questions, you respond candidly, concisely, and clearly, and people will say, other than the numbers, even the figures are making sense. Um, I think that is the trust that he says uh, these people who are spreading lies, innuendo, and propaganda want to erode. Um, I, I just wonder, because we understand the president will be addressing the nation tomorrow morning, I would like to hear whether this is something that he, he speaks to mm -hmm. and addresses. You know, I think that would be important to hear uh, from him at this very early stage when we're starting to ask All right, questions. I think we need to move on. Remember, we haven't